The aliens are coming! On today's Big Bang, make a marshmallow space cannon. Meet America's most famous evil inventor. And turn a plastic folder into your own fluttering butterfly. Welcome to the Big Bang. And it's my turn to set the puzzle, so... Hmm, Violet, that appears to be a plastic bag full of water and with a bunch of pencils stuck in it. Not what I would normally call a puzzle. Yeah, but I made it without spilling a drop. And the puzzle is to make another one exactly the same. Well, I could glue no, some pencils. No, there's no glue involved, but it can be done. Have a think about it and I'll tell you the solution at the end of the show. Defeated Lieutenant Berlin. Well done, Lieutenant Jones. It's all down to our trusty space cannons. And if the aliens invade your living room, you're going to need an alien defence cannon too. The secret to good interplanetary weaponry is cardboard. Actually, my gun's made out of a crisp tube. Lop off the top. You won't need that either. Then glue on a cotton reel at the back. Now I've also added some masking tape around there. Now you'll need another tube. And I found the thing that works perfectly is one of these large size poster tubes. You can get them from stationers. It needs to be about twice the length of your crisp tube. And you'll need to lop off one end. Don't throw it away, you'll need that later. And then Cut a slot in the top for your ammunition. You'll need a barrel to fire your ammunition through, and for that, you need the inside of one of these kitchen foil rolls. Now, not all kitchen foil rolls are the right size. It needs to be about 25 millimetres, or in other words, exactly the right size to fire your ammunition. The way to test your pipe and its thickness is to pop your marshmallow in and blow. <coughs> Perfect. It didn't come out too easy and it wasn't too difficult to blow out. Now, glue your barrel in position in your large poster tube so you can get at the barrel through the slot because that's where you pop your ammunition in. Now, you'll need to make an airtight seal and for that you need a plastic shopping bag with a hole cut in the end. Slide that over the little barrel and tape it in position like that. Now, remember that piece of uh, poster tube that I saved earlier on? Cut a slot in it and you slide that over the large poster tube. So now you've got an airtight seal over that hole. Then you'll need to slide your piston in. Now, note that I've got some masking tape on there and that gives it a really good airtight seal. The rest is just a matter of decoration. I've made my cannon and covered it with some uh, brightly coloured paper. Now, your cannon works due to air pressure. What you've got here is a huge amount of air in this big cylinder being forced through a very narrow tube. So it comes out of that tube at high speed and takes a marshmallow with it. They're back, Gareth! They're back! Don't worry, Violet. I'm coming. Bladderack, Ernest? No, bladderack isn't stomachache, Ernest. It's a type of seaweed. Here are two more things about seaweed. Can you tell which one is the big fib? 
fact or fib. Ice cream contains seaweed. It helps to make it thicker. Don't worry, you can't taste it. Tuck in, Cynthia. Fact or fib. In Scotland, farmers feed seaweed to their sheep to turn the wool green. Saves having to dye the wool later. Ooh. So, which is the big fib? Make your choice now. Well, ice cream does contain seaweed. So, the big fibber is, yes, Ernest. Sheep aren't fed seaweed to turn their wool green. But some sheep in Scotland are fed seaweed because it makes their wool fluffier and softer. Yeah. Violet! 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 Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, for this trick I shall need a volunteer from the audience. Can I do it? Yes, you, Gareth. I mean, sir. Now, I want you to take a coin from this bag. Right. Any coin. Yeah, got a coin. And make a mark on it, your own unique mark, which I could not possibly recognise. OK, hang on a second. Hang on. Right, done it. Right, that beside you, there is a plate. Yeah. Hides the coin amongst its brothers and sisters upon that plate. OK. And I mix them up so there's no cheating. Right, yep. Yeah. Right. There are mysterious forces at work. If I run my hand over the plate, I will pick up your personal aura yeah. and find your coin. <laughs> my personal aura. It's that one. Hey! <laughs> hey! Wow! Well done! Great trick! What's the secret then? Ah! Violet? Oh no, come on, tell us, please! There is a mysterious force at work here, but don't tell Gareth. That force is magnetism. You see, newer 1P coins are made of steel, so they're magnetic. But older 1P coins are made of copper, so they're not magnetic. I got a magnet and glued it to a piece of paper, then wrapped that piece of paper around my ring. So I got Gareth to pick one of the newer 1P coins and hide it amongst the older 1P coins. And when I passed my hand over, it jumped up. If you like that trick, there are plenty more on the Big Bang website. But remember, don't tell Gareth. The inventor, Thomas Edison, was known as the greatest living American. He was supposed to have had more ideas than anyone else in history. However, the Big Bang can reveal that he was actually... <laughs> ..completely and utterly evil. You can't prove a thing. They were my ideas, I tell you. They were all my ideas. Now, where's my plan? <laughs> like any evil genius, Edison wanted to make loads of money and take over the world. He reckoned gaslighting was useless. You know, gaslighting is useless. And that there was a fortune to be made from electric lighting. Good idea. There is a fortune to be made from electrical lighting. So, he phoned the mayor of New York City. Hello, Mr Mayor. Tom Edison here. Listen, I want to put electrical lighting all over New York. <laughs> what do you mean electrical lighting doesn't work? <laughs> Does too? <laughs> Look, I'll prove it to you, OK? Edison owned a workshop where he employed teams of scientists. These people invented something new every two weeks, if they wanted to keep their jobs. As for Edison, well, he took all the credit. His people came up with really useful stuff, like typewriters and telephones. Get on with your work! As well as not-so-useful stuff, like the electric pen. Now, a light bulb had already been invented by a British scientist called Joseph Swan. <sighs> but it wasn't much use. The problem was the filament, the bit that glowed in the middle. Swan's was made of carbon, so it only lasted a couple of hours. Edison needed something that lasted much longer. Edison and his team tested every material they could think of. And I mean everything. OK. Teapots. <laughs> Dang! Sandwiches! 
Darn it! Tittles! Oh, Tittles! What have I done? Oh, poor puss. They tried over 6,000 materials from all over the world, but nothing worked until... Shut up and get on with your work. <laughs> Wait, what's that you say? You found something that will glow for two whole days? I'm there already. This is going to make me rich beyond my wildest dreams. Well, maybe not that rich, but very rich. <laughs> and the magic material? A specially prepared length of cotton thread. Simple, really. Now all he had to do was convince the mayor to approve his master plan. Hey, slow down, Edison. I can't see a damn thing. What? <gasps> so, Mr. Mayor, would you like uh, electric Holy light for New York moly. City? I'll have to dig up all the streets and lay power cables and build a gigantic power station that'll put the gas companies out of business. It's so Excellent. Up. Just sign Bye. here if you would, Mayor New York City. Excellent. Today, New York City. Tomorrow, the world. <laughs> Edison did make his fortune, but remember that British scientist, Joseph Swan? Yeah? Well, he sued Edison for stealing his idea and won. What? It's a lie, I tell you. No bird-brained English guy's gonna get the better of me. They were all my ideas, my ideas. And I invented milk and broccoli. <laughs> There are full instructions on how to make a fluttering butterfly on the Big Bang website. How are you getting on with Violet's impossible pencil puzzle? She reckons that she made this plastic bag with water in it, with pencils stuck through it, without spilling a single drop of water. Gareth, admit it, you're completely stumped. Well, I reckon I could do it if the bag was full of jelly. Now nah, you can feel it's water. Anyway, it's all down to the type of plastic. Here, hang on to that and give it a gentle pull. It's really stretchy. Exactly, and most freezer and sandwich bags are made of the same soft plastic. So, get your bag, fill it with water, get a sharp pencil and... Just pierce the plastic. Wow. It doesn't tear or anything. I've got it. Because the plastic is stretchy, instead of tearing, it stretches around the pencil, sealing the hole. Right, have a go. Go on. If I can do this, I will be amazed. Are you ready? Go on. Brilliant! <laughs> if you like that puzzle, there are plenty more like it on our website. As well as details of everything you've seen in today's show. That's it for now. We'll see you next time on The, the Big, Big Bang. Bang. Go on, you have a stab. <laughs> In the next Big Bang, off-road racing buggies made of toast? The mad Italians, who invented the battery by studying frog's legs. And sandcastles that last forever. <laughs> <laughs>